Lobster season, day two. Back out here, got the team of seven. Cousin Drew, Cousin Hunter joining myself, my mom, my dad, Kayla, and Brandon. And we're ready to catch some lobster. On day two, though, our um, expectations, at least some of our expectations, weren't as high. All right, guys, what's y'all's predictions? Slow. Okay, if we get 20, I think it'll be a good morning. Man, have a little faith. And they asked Mr. T, what's your prediction? He's like, pain. <laughs> Might be a little pain today, but no pain, no gain, right? We went to our first spot and we caught zero lobster. And some of our expectations, I think, dropped even lower. Um, I think at one point we were like, you know what, we don't need lobster. <laughs> Let's just go home. Quit while we're ahead. Some of you may have been there, you know. Talking about where your fun meter dips a little low out on the boat. We pulled around closer to the bridge to an area I haven't really got to work much in the past few years. And uh, that kind of helped us a lot. Um, my dad and Drew found some spots. Drew found a really nice spot called the Cousin Drew Ledge. And we were able to get some lobster on that. But it was tough. Okay, It's a hard area to work because we're very close to the bridge. Um, a lot of guys would go in this area and anchor up and put on their tanks and work the pylons, stuff like that. We're actually pulling in between it because we're just hitting smaller single ledges here and there. But if you're inexperienced, I wouldn't do this because you got to be careful. You know, if that current can run you into the bridge or the little electrical pylons around it. And uh, it's, sometimes it's hard to get to your divers. And boats are coming through, so you want to make sure you pick a spot that's not too crowded with boat traffic. Here we have our first keeper of the day. We have a keeper, guys. A little bit shallower. We're looking a little better. The current's still strong, but um. It'll slow down soon, so here we go. Yeah, dog. Now he's let go. Is this one of the places you have market? No. Market. No. Make it to the market. Okay. It's a good sign when they say market. There you go, I'll pull you right up. Every lobster counts, right? I haven't even got to what I thought would be the good bottom. Had a couple issues. I was afraid one time a commercial boat was going to take out our diver, but uh, thankfully we got to him. I, I try to use the boat, keep my boats in between the divers and any other potential, you know, boats. You know, if a boat comes up, I'm not trying to like push you away or keep you out of my spot. I'm just trying to keep you out. Um, away from my divers in case you don't see them. I use the boat as kind of put my boat between the divers and any other boats that are around. And don't forget dive flags. Use them. Abide by them. If you see someone else who has a dive flag, stay away. Okay, give them plenty of space. I was diving offshore a couple of times and we go down and no one's around us. And this is a big area. There's like tons of artificial and natural reefs within a few square miles. We come back up and there's like all these boats around us. I think they're like, oh, a dive flag. I don't know what he's on. And they just come right next to you. It's kind of weird. Don't do that, guys. Hey, shake the... Sorry. Let go. Swim to Drew. He's right behind you. Yeah. Yeah, the current's pushing to him, so he, I can't make that turn. Current is ripping. So in cases like this, I try to try to use the boat, pulling straight ahead against the current. They can hang on the ropes and kind of help them out as best I can. I don't know if Drew and Hunter were ready for the accuracy some of our seasoned, you know, ski rope throwers have in terms of accuracy. I mean. Some of our rope throwers, Kayla, my mom, 
they'll sling a rope right to you. Unfortunately, your hand's here and your face is here, so if you don't catch it, you get pegged in the head with a ski rope, which hurts. Um, my brother got pegged in the head once, and he started bleeding. <laughs> Might have to throw him a rope and drag him over. Okay. You got one, Dad? Here, we'll throw you a rope. Here you go, Drew. I'll hold you for a second. Okay, Dad. Watch your night, all right? Amen. Right there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. There's several more down there. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's well, the other's right there. Right there. Where the marker? It's right there. All right. You got a marker, Hunter? There's one right there. At right Brandon's feet. Right there. You got the marker, Doug? Uh, the, the buoy itself will probably be where, where we need them. That used to be bad. I'd, I'd pull the rope up to me, and then if I need to look at something, I'd just Dad. let the rope go. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, the marker. Okay. That's going to get Drew a little further in case there's something else. You're fine. You're Are we off of again, or is it behind us? Well, he let go and got one. He said there was no more. Oh, well, well, well. Did you guys come get him or what? No, we told him to get That's right. Don't mess with the boat when it's dry right now. Yeah. Find yourself. Stuck here. You know, me and your mom just Here you go, Drew. I can't get real close. Have the marker jug ready? It is, it, I got it. This is one of the ones I was taking you. Okay. Call it Drew's spot. It Drew's. Cousin Drew's spot. It's a good sign. Well, they're both off. Yeah, no, I think Drew's about to get kicked in the face. <laughs> he can't kick his face. Welcome to our world. <laughs> no, but we'll file the assault report when we get on shore. Nobody else around, huh? Yeah. Else is away. You also got to be careful. A couple times we had some uh, some lobster guys kind of converge on the same spot. You know, one guy was behind the other. The guy didn't know it. He got, you know, kicked in the face with fins. I mean, if you've lobstered for, you know, more than a day, I'm sure you've had that happen to you. Someone gets in front of you and, you know, wham, lose a mask. You know. Is that all off that spot? Yeah. Okay, we'll get the mark and I'll work. Marker and a... Drew might be off. Dad's off. Drew is uh, not off. No, he is very good at looking off. Drew's off and Dad's still on. That might be a safe thing to make sure JJ didn't kick him in the head. <laughs> Alright guys, current's slowing up. Trying a new spot. Gotta get a little run. Uh, boy did a close call with commercial guy. Was he getting on or what? Look, he's starting to get close. I want to get that motor and get back to Drew. So we get some lobster and the current starts slackening off, so we go back to another part of the bridge. Now one area Drew suggested, we hadn't really done this in a long time, um, I never was very good at it in general, but he was saying uh, go up to these undercuts. You see there's a type of seaweed we call an eelgrass, and they're kind of on a, a sandy bottom, and these sands are usually on hills, this grass and the sand, and a lot of times the current makes what we call undercuts, which is basically like a little cutout, a little ledge under the grass. So you can pull up under that and the lobster loves small ledges and these undercut like structure. So we started pulling around these eelgrass and we were we were checking them out. Some would be empty, but we found some good numbers on them. You know, you'll see them 
and you'll see a bunch of lobster and you go check them out and start catching them. A couple times I found lobster. They might have already been spooked out of their ledge, but they were actually in the grass, kind of kind of camouflaged. Something important too, you know, we've got a lot of stuff to do. We're trying to be efficient and get this lobster before the tide picks up again, the current starts moving. Always start catching the biggest lobster in the hole, okay? Catch the biggest one. If they keep, well then go the next biggest. If the biggest one already doesn't keep, well you know nothing else on that ledge keeps, then you need to move on. Don't waste any time there, okay? Wasting time is probably the biggest issue I see with uh, lobster people not doing well. Like them getting in the boat, I watch people take like five, 10 minutes just to get in the boat it seems like. I'm like, just jump in and go because that current's carrying you away from your spot. So little things like that, getting in the boat, getting your gear on and in the water, that kind of distinguishes, you know, the more successful lobster catchers over some of the newer people. So guys, we did it. Uh -huh. Wasn't sure we would. 1017. Actually, we've done it 10, what, 10, 10? Here's the deal. You're up around the, uh, we got the wind and the current running the same way. Got close to the bridge, boats cutting in and out, so um, it was everything we could do just to keep from crashing. We saw our life flash before our eyes probably five or six times. Um, I was as nervous as the, and then for landing, actually. <laughs> Re Reentering the orbit. A couple of times I was down there. And I was like, I gotta get this out. Like, okay, I about got him, and then he kicked back down, and I'm like, not sure if I got breath for this, but I don't really want to give up now. So what did you tell yourself? I just told myself, Jeremy, it's gonna be all right. I think I seen you there a few times, Drew. I was there a lot. <laughs> I was there a lot of times. I saw one time he kicked back down. I was like, dang, Drew's gotta be out of air. He's he's been working hard. I was out of air, <laughs> but, uh, but I knew it was gonna be all right. He knew it was going to be all right. Well, I wasn't sure we were going to make it, but we did. We got our limit. It was tough without Chris, for that's for sure. We all had to flex, take on some different roles. I tried to fill up with Christopher. Yep. It wasn't the same. Took two people. Took Hunter and Drew. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Find us on other social media like Facebook, Instagram, stuff like that. Thanks for watching the video and we'll see you next time.